<sighs> All right, uh, before we get to the bad, which I think we can imagine is, uh, substantial. And, uh, you know, start with the good. What most people love about Fallout is not necessarily what I love about Fallout. You know, people love the story, the characters, the world building. I always just kind of like the game part. You know, like wandering around, exploring, you know, what's this, who, who can I kill at? I don't really care about the story, because unless you nail that shit, you're just wasting my time. And you know, Bethesda is not exactly Stan Lee. So the idea for me of a Fallout game without the story and the characters and, you know, just the game plus a bunch of survival elements sounded like exactly what I would want. Yeah, fuck everyone else who loves Fallout. Make it just for me. Mostly just like ghouls and Scorch. This is like zombies. Like an open world zombie crafting survival game. This is like my fucking dream game on paper. Cause this, this is not paper. This is on my TV. And it's a piece of shit. And that brings me to golden rule number four. Execution over concept, or play over display. Even if what you have on paper is exactly what your audience wants, you can always fuck it up. Doesn't matter how good or bad your idea is if you fuck it up. And oh boy, did they fuck this up. Jesus. Uh, the creation engine, uh, yeah, let's, let's start with that. Uh, so the creation engine is, uh, a giant hunk of shit. It is old software that nobody likes except Bethesda. This is how a zombie movie starts. <laughs> and everyone keeps telling them to stop fucking using it because it kind of looks and runs like shit now. And it doesn't help that they keep fucking lying about it and pretending that there's either huge advancements or a whole new engine altogether. And it's not. It's the same fucking piece of shit engine. We always start with the world. And this time it features all new rendering, lighting, and landscape technology. All new rendering, lighting, and landscape technology. All new rendering, lighting, and landscape technology. Todd, stop, stop lying. It allows us to have 16 times the detail. Lies, oh lies. This is an engine that has evolved less than Mike Pence. And I also believe that someday scientists will come to see that only the theory of intelligent design provides even a remotely rational explanation for the known universe. Literally the same crippling memory leaks that haunted the original Xbox version were in Skyrim like a fucking decade later because they just don't fix shit. I, I read on the internet that our games have had a few bugs. <laughs> and that uh, sometimes it doesn't just work. They wait for modders to fix them, and then when their next game comes around, they ignore the fixes and start from the broken version again. Because Bethesda. Just about the only thing that isn't a problem anymore is the save file memory leak, because it's an online game. We have built a platform, 100% dedicated servers, In a day and age when you're kind of expecting things to look and run decently nearing the end of a console generation, this just doesn't hold up to anything that came out in the last like two months. Unless you are running an overpowered PC, even on the X, you will get a sub 30 at all times. Okay, uh, we don't have four hours, so let's just stop it there with the creation engine, because, uh... 
The bad design decisions start like five minutes into this game. Especially at the beginning, just about everything you'll see are short enemies. Short enemies, especially below your firing line, have almost always been bad ideas. And unanimously people's least favorite part of just about any game. This is literally the only part I cheered for. A game with short enemies nipping at your feet either needs perfect controls or the old freezy vat system to work. And even then it's annoying. This is neither. This kind of design and balance is so poor, I have Far Cry 4 flashbacks. A supposed shooter dominated by knee-high landmines running in packs. And those motherfucking eagles! Animations are as rough as they ever were. And coming right on the heels of Red Dead, a game much like GTA that redefined animation systems. It's just... Ugh. It's like comparing a console to a handheld 10 years ago. It's ironic that this game is labeled as requiring internet connection, as figuring out half of the basics is fucking impossible without Google, without which navigating the endlessly unclear objectives and unintuitive menus is a hair-pulling nightmare. Oh, that that's where the place camp button is hidden? How the fuck did you think I was gonna where's Waldo that one? I didn't even figure out how to crit hit until like level 12. Yes, I see you flashing Y, I'm hitting Y, I don't understand what you want from me. Why is placing the camp such a fucking pain? And it makes no sense. Nice open areas won't let me place the fucking thing ever unless I walk half a mile away from where I want to be for whatever reason this inconvenient mountainside is suddenly okay. And why, when I leave my camp, do I not reload back into my motherfucking camp? Why do I load somewhere in the vicinity of my camp, causing the first thing I do every time to be where's Waldoing my fucking camp? How hard is it? Fallout 4, I'm out. I'm back in right where I left. Not somewhere inevitably in the woods, because I can't place this thing fucking anywhere else. And nothing feels permanent. I can't tell glitches from design anymore. I already did that mission. Why are you telling me to do it? It's not an event. It's a regular quest. I already spent 90 minutes doing it. Why is it still there now? Why is everything so fucking unclear? Even your points of interest are a fucking nightmare. Is that a thing I need to pick up? Or is it an exit to the building I'm in just telling me there's stuff out in the world also? This was a basic problem with Fallout 4 as well, and just more evidence that Bethesda doesn't learn. The new perk system is kinda okay, I guess. Obviously easily exploitable for microtransactions, but ugh, to be expected, I guess. But at the same time, it's really inferior to perks, because now you can swap cards out based on what you're doing, which adds a lot of busy work. With perks, there was a permanence to it, so it mattered more. And the flashlight, Jesus Christ, again with the fucking flashlight. Bethesda, this is what a flashlight is. This, this, this is a flashlight. Not this weird ambient green shit that makes everything around you blue mountain dew and cast no shadows, creation engine. Ugh. Something else that uh, doesn't help the balance is that it's kind of impossible to fucking lose. No matter where you go, there's still level 1 enemies fucking everywhere. In the, like, 16 levels I played, I got killed once at, like, level 4 by a level 50 ganker. I fell off stairs once and died from a fall. And once you could say an enemy killed me when it blew up a car next to me and the explosion killed me. But, you know, I'm not actually sure in the, like, 16 levels I played that an enemy actually killed me. Because you're practically invincible. And the enemies all die like bitches. It's so horribly balanced that you just can't lose. And it's good, because the new real-time VAT system is kind of eh. You know, it's serviceable. But it's kind of eh. And, uh, you know, if you weren't borderline invincible, it would be a huge problem. The kind of worst thing about this whole thing is just how utterly fucking pointless it is. Because... You know, again, on paper, while it's nice to have a kind of zombie apocalypse survival game that's like Fallout 4, I already have one, and it's Fallout 4. Mods, bitches. Modded Fallout 4 is the second best zombie game I ever played. It's like Last of Us meets The Walking Dead. I get everything I need, and it looks and runs way better. And there's no mod in this online shit, so that's it. 
Which brings me to golden rule number five. You got two weeks to patch that shit. So I know that games today, especially online games, take a while to get patched up. When I was a kid, people actually had to finish their fucking games first. But whatever, I'm not going to get into that whole nine hour blah. But at least two weeks and you got to get it done. You had two weeks and they did patch it up somewhat. It's a bit more stable. It's a bit less buggy, but it's still an unstable buggy hunk of shit. Ugh. Ugh. But of course, what do we expect? This is Bethesda. One of the biggest problems here is that this game follows the only finished Bethesda game ever, and that's Skyrim VR. Skyrim VR is the only finished, stable, smooth Bethesda game I have ever played, and everything's just kind of fine. And do you know why that is the only finished Bethesda game? Because Bethesda didn't fucking make it. Their parent company, ZeniMax, made it. That's right. In order to release their only finished game ever, their parents had to do it. How embarrassing. And even then, it took two months of patching until they added turning. TURNING! Ugh, no, click turning is not turning. Turning is turning! All right, uh... Ugh, what a hunk of shit. I don't know, man. I'll I'll come back in a year and see what's happened. You know, I'm sure they'll have patched a lot, added a lot, streamlined a lot. Maybe even it'll be running slightly better. But there's only so much you can polish a turd. And that's what this is, a turd. They can polish it all I want. It's just going to be a shiny turd. So, all right. We all, we all properly disappointed. We done now. Can I go home? Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen Award. Yeah, I know you guys built yourselves a big empire. But, uh, you know we're all here for your sister, right? God damn. What happened at costume? Ugh.